Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Quick, episode 63. Today, we're going to do our Patreon-sponsored movie review of the week, and that review will be for the movie Itu Mama Tambien, which is a Criterion Collection film, one of the highest regarded on Letterboxd as well. And this was suggested by our patron, Callum Singh. If you want a chance to suggest this stuff to review and drafts, as well as so many other perks that I can't even name off. We have so many. Go check out the Patreon down below so you can see all the perks we have and see which uh, tier fits best for you. We are once again without Cam for this episode. Uh, He's still driving back. Uh, It's a a long trek from Nashville to Indiana. So we are going to be reviewing this without him for the second week in a row because he wasn't able to go to last week's either. But uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So um, I don't know. I guess we'll start with our scores of it and then we'll get into like spoiler E things. But this is a coming of age story. It's a drama. It's not really something that like the ending spoils anything. It's uh, so it's not really like a big spoiler movie filled thing, but we're just, just going to talk brass tacks yeah, quickly. There's, there's like, no cameos or anything like that. So if you're right. expecting, you know. Well, C- C- Cassie and Andor makes cameos. Di- Diego Luna. <laughs> um, Fair enough. But uh, yeah, so let, let's just talk uh, quick about what our, what our quick initial thoughts of the movie was and uh, our overall review of it. But before we do that quickly, I'm just going to give a quick synopsis of what the movie is about. So in Mexico, two teenage boys and an attractive older woman embark on a road trip and learn a thing or two about life, friendship, sex, and each other. There's a quick watch just at about 100 minutes. Um, We'll start with Seth. Seth, what was your thoughts? Because I actually haven't seen, I don't know if you logged on Letterboxd yet. I have no clue what your thoughts are. I did log it. I haven't posted a review. Well, I haven't looked at what your rating was or anything, so I have no clue what your thoughts are on this. So what are your thoughts? What's your rating? And uh, yeah. Yeah, so... um... I really like this. I give it a, a four out of five. Uh, I so Alfonso Cuarón. He's done a few films I've loved. Children of Men. I, I love. I think it's one of the best cyber films of, of the past. It was in your top four. They tweeted the other day. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, yeah. I love Children of Men so much. Um, have you seen it yet, George? I think you've seen it. Yeah, Men. Tyler. I think you'd really really like it. Um, Prince of Azkaban. Of course. I also, I also really liked Gravity as well. I haven't seen uh, Roma yet. They did. Was it Rome or Rome? Yeah, Rome. Rome. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I think it's a, I'm a sucker for a coming of age at times with, with themes of, you know, human connection, of, of building up human experiences. You know, the, the backdrop was beautiful. I think the, the visuals were kind of raw, um, but beautiful at the same time. I think it was layered with a lot of political subtext, which is very similar to what I've seen in Grand's other work, especially with when it comes to um, Children of Men. It was quite similar to that in the way it's presented. And obviously, his films all look amazing. I don't know what I don't know about Roma but per se, but the ones I've seen, they all have a strong visual presence. Um, I think that you know th- this has a lot of themes of class explored. I think it's just about seeing these people go through their dynamics, going through you know human pain, relationships, friendship, anguish, um, and and stuff that I, I really really tend to, to to lean towards during films. There was a few uh, moments I didn't love. I think uh, the narration is kind of weird. I don't know about you guys, but it made me think every time it came on, I thought my uh, <laughs> film had frozen. Mm-hmm. It was a bit weird. Like it would, it would pause. The complete thing was a silent. Then, like two seconds, he would kick it with the the narration. And <clears throat> we, yeah, you know, I think we we spoke about this last time. I think George touched on it when we spoke about um, it's such a beautiful day. Narration's a weird one because I think it can get. Oh, and we spoke about with flaming heart, obviously, which is uh, quite the not the comparison of this film anyway, but. Um, it's it's something which either can really work or not for me. And whilst I think that it, it's kind of needed in this to add that extra bit of analysis and, and poignancy when it comes to what we're seeing and kind of take us through these steps in this journey that they're having, um, the three of them, it did take me out from time to time. And I think it was a bit too frequently used for my liking, per se. Um, not that I hated it, and I do think it's needed, but it was something about it. It just really took me out. I think it was the slight pause as well. The fact okay, I was like, what the fuck's happened to my finger? I thought it was broken, whatever. Um, but overall, I, I think this is a, a really just remarkable achievement. I can definitely see why people regard it as one of the best um, coming of age films ever. It's, it's very highly regarded from what I've seen. I know a lot of people personally who really, really love it. And, and I certainly really liked it as well. And I also think I was like, my viewing experience wasn't the best. Cause I obviously, I, I told you guys, I got the timing wrong for the podcast today. I was kind of rushing at the end of it. Um, I think if I watched this again when I was kind of in that full fluid state of mind, I would have enjoyed this more. But saying that, I still get the four stars, still really, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, it was great. It was great. Nice. George? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, I, I mentioned to you guys, I think I said it on the main podcast episode this week. This is one of those movies that's been on my watch list forever. And I've yeah, just same as me, been. Yeah. 
uh, putting it off because a lot of people just describe this movie to me as like softcore porn and just like this extravaganza of horny sure scenes bad. left and right. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad at all. But like going into it, that's what fully what I expected. And I just yeah, never same. was in the mood to watch that kind of movie. Um, but I never realized this movie was just layered with a lot of just deep themes, a lot of questions to be asked and answered. Um, there's so much more than obviously the sex scenes and the nudity to this movie, uh, but which I think is just brilliant. Um, I love this movie a lot. Um, I want I want a shirt on our merch that says there's beauty and simplicity because I say that all the time. And I think that describes this movie um, just as perfectly as possible. Novak just broke is about to serve out for uh, for the title. Um, shout out Novak. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, but no, I, I, I really, really like this movie um it's just a very uh toned down down to earth uh introspective reflection of life um i put in my letterbox review a, a very I, i'm not going to say very famous because it's from the avatar the last day of bender show uh, but it's an avatar the last day of bender show that says it's time for you to start asking the big questions of who are you and what do you want and i think that just reflects this movie just really well um, I think everything was on point technically. I think some of the shot selections were beautiful. The acting was uh, really amazing. The, these this cast of you know three actors and actresses um, just knew when to tone it down and get emotional and get serious, but also you know their fun, quick banter back and forth was just a real treat to watch. It made me feel like. I wasn't watching a movie. It made me feel like I was genuinely just watching three people on a journey, which which I love when a movie can do that. Um, I went with a four and a half out of five. This this very quickly rose to, you know, very high, high on my coming of age uh, uh, ranking. Nice, nice. I thought you'd like it to be fair because you're a coming of age. I like coming of age. But yeah, I, like I, I have a sucker for a good coming, coming of age, of age yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah, this is the high level of that, definitely. Yeah, speaking of Alfonso Cuarón, it's just funny. Like, I saw this Letterbox review, one of the one that was, like, the more, most popular one. It's like, because this is a, one he made right before Prisoner of Azkaban. And it's it's crazy that someone watched this movie and was like, yeah, he should direct the next Harry Potter movie. It's like, yeah. what a jump to go from Itamama Tambien to Prisoner of Azkaban. But both and then were, he just makes the best one. Right. Like, he, he, he knocked yeah. it out of the park. And this movie's a great coming-of-age story. It's, it's one that, I think I mentioned this to George earlier today. It was just like... I really I liked it throughout. Like I thought it was a good movie throughout. And then like the very end really is what kind of put it over the top for me for being like a four point five out of four point five stars. The very low end so it was an eight point five out of ten. So it's like right on the border of four and four point five. But that ending, man, I, it was just, just sad. I, and we'll talk about it once we get into the official spoiler section. But this is this film left you so much to chew on. Like if you if you're a fan of Diego Luna, you know, uh Rogue Rogue One, uh Andor, you know, you'll see every inch of him in this movie, like legitimately every single inch of Diego Luna <laughs> and not just for a split second for a long time. There's a lot of nudity in this movie, um, but uh, just so much philosophical questions about life. Like these two boys are really figuring out themselves, figuring out each other, figuring out life itself. You have to think of like, how are you going to like, neither of them know how to love someone else. They're both in relationships and clearly neither are going well but they act like everything's going well, but then you realize things aren't exactly what it seems. How do they love themselves? They're clearly struggling with their own personal self, self identity. And then the main thing I just kind of got from this is like, I mean, I, well, I guess we'll just get into spoilers first. So I'll, I'll say I gave it a 4.5 stars, 8.5 out of 10. So 4.5 from me, 4.5 from George, four from Seth. Um, but yeah, now we'll officially get into kind of like the spoilers. Well, before, before we oh, get yeah, into spoilers, ahead, cause it's not really, I, I don't, I wouldn't consider this a real spoiler, but the, on the, on the front of the narration, and I know, over the last couple of weeks, we've obviously talked about it's such a beautiful day, and then flaming hot too. It's weird how there's been so many. We've watched so many narrations. Yeah, we've watched a lot with uh, narration. Yeah. And I think it's interesting to see how our opinions are changing depending on how they're presented. And I think in this movie, it really, really works because at the end of the day, I think this movie really is just about life and the fact that Alfonso Cuarón took the time to add this narration to talk about the fisherman and how the building of the hotel is going to set him back and he's going to end up work. Like we didn't care about that. We didn't know we cared about that, but that's what this movie is. It's just, everyone's going through different things at different times in their life. Everything's got, everyone's got different things going on. So I think in that sense, the narration works really well because it's just fleshing out everyone. And in a movie about life, that's what we want. That's what we should get. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I go. No, it yeah, makes sense. That was actually a perfect, perfect segue into what I'm talking about. So we'll, we'll kind of start talking about spoilers now. But 
So for me, like the main takeaway I got from this movie is not like life is meaningless, but more so like life is unpredictable. Like people die, governments change. That's why I love the the narration of this because like you know, there'll just be people on a road trip trying to find a beach, like a three day long road trip, and then you'll get a narration about like, oh, they they used to have a house here, but they're now homeless because they they built a new resort hotel, and uh, oh, there's these police that are pulling over these people on the side of the road. There's these wars going on. Um, it's just kind of like all this stuff is happening all the time. People die in this movie. Like the woman you find out had cancer the entire time. The two guys that thought they were in good relationships were at the beginning. You'd see they're just young youth that are just like having sex all the time, having fun, like loving life. But then you realize, Oh, they've been like unfaithful. They've been cheating on each other. And like the two like friends are really unsure about like how their friendship is even like a good friendship or not. It's like friendships come and go relationships come and go. Governments change. There's war. People die from a motorcycle accident, like her first boyfriend. People die from cancer. Anything can change on the drop of a dime. So you just got to keep living. Like the, the one quote I love from the movie that I put in my letterbox review is life is like the surf. So give yourself away like the sea. There's ups and downs. You, literally anything could happen. Stuff's changing all the time. Stuff that at one point in your life feels like it's crippling end of the world. This is the worst news I've ever gotten. You might not even remember two years ago. That's why I also love the narration points where they're like, he's never felt this way since he was eight years old. He's never felt this type of pain since he was 11 years old. Because the type of thing, like there's so many things that, especially when you're at the age they are, where life feels like it's just crashing down and nothing will get you through this. And then like two years from now, you'll be like, I don't even remember that. Like what even was I so upset about and hot and bothered about? So I, I don't know. This movie just left me a lot to ponder about. The ending was so sad to me just cause like, you know, these guys shouldn't be friends necessarily. Like they're not good for each other. It just seems like they're friends by a stance of they live near each other and they hang out all the time, but they cheated on each other's girlfriends. They don't really have that much in common when you actually get they're, down they're to They're from it. completely opposite ends of the classes. So the from, classes yeah, well, from completely up, up in the film. Yep, yeah, and they make fun of each other all the time, but actually that creates a lot of tension because there's a lot of different differences in the classes. So by the end of the story, you find out that the woman they're on the road trip with, she dies of cancer. She had the whole time, never told them. And then at the same time, those two that go on this road trip, they talked to like once or twice like after, and then they met for coffee a couple years later, but they never talked again. They were never friends. And it wasn't necessarily like, Cause there's stuff on this road trip that happens where it makes them fight and not want to be friends, but it wasn't really that that led them to not be friends ever again. Cause they kind of got over those beefs. It was more just they're completely different people and life splits separate ways. And I'm sure we've all experienced that too, where you have a friend who you might hang out with all the time when you're a kid or a teenager or whatever that yeah. I have plenty that I've never talked to in 10 years at this point, even though I like was at their house every single day when I was a kid and it's, yeah, it's so just I'd... life changes and it's just crazy. And it's just kind of a sad ending that really put it over the top for me where it's just like, and they never talk to each other again. It's like, damn, that's deep. It's very much a relatable film on life experience for anyone, really, isn't it? That's the whole point of it. For um, sure. Yeah, I completely understand what you're saying. I think it's about driving where the connection actually brings happiness and, and going through these experiences of life and not regretting them at the same time. And I think I think with a film like this, I say this with a lot of films, it's similar to it's, a, it's Such a Beautiful Day Last Week, it really is something that, that, that requires another watch, especially from my end. I think... For most people, this will be a film where it might require you a couple of times to really absorb everything. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to watching it again and picking up new points and new, new different bits, especially when I'm not in such a rush as well. I think, because, like I said about the narration, even though it kind of hurts me at times, like it, it's definitely important in this film. I don't know, narration is just kind of a weird one for me, but it's definitely important in this film and bringing extra analysis and extra poignancy to, towards the meaning, because it'd be hard to convey that if the kids started speaking about it, you know, if the teens started speaking about it, it'd be hard to convey what they're trying to convey in the film. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked it. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, to watching it again and, and trying to pick up everything else. Um, I think it's a very relatable film on just human connection that everyone can well, relate to, especially if you're young and going through life like we are as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the narration too, like I was just reminding that other scene where, yeah, for, like George is saying, it's weird how, depending on the type of movie, what, what narration you enjoy <clears> and what you don't. I just really did enjoy in this one. Like, when they were just, just because they're just kids on a road trip, but all this life's happening outside of them that they're just unaware of. My, one scene that comes to mind was when they were driving by that cliff and they were like, if you would have driven on this 11 years ago, you would have saw like an overturned truck with a bunch of dead people yeah, yeah. and like a, a chaotic crash. And it's like, they're just driving by it like normal now because like I was just saying before, it's just years go by and you just forget things that happen that are so devastating at the time. And I just thought it was really well done. Also, when the movie started, I did not expect this to, when they said they're going to go to, heaven's mouth the beach and trying to get this girl to go with them did not expect they were going on a four-day trip to a beach like 
how far are you driving oh, for kind of crazy trip? Though, yeah. yeah and then they like get back because it nice took them like beach. four days to get there probably four days to get back and then when they get back it's like their parents never even knew they were gone it's like what the heck <laughs> it's been eight days <laughs> it was crazy any anyone else have any other thoughts they want to talk about for you I, I, I think like when it goes to something like this it's not really i mean there is spoilers like we spoke about with Aaron Canton and whatever mm-hmm. I think it's the, the, the film everyone should watch, similar to what we said last week, is a film that you'll probably relate to, you'll probably find yourself in connections with different different parts, whether that's politically, whether that's the class system, whether that's the human connections, whether that's the experiences, wherever it might be. I think it's an important watch. I'm glad I watched it. Um, like George said, it's one that's sat on my watch list for ages. Uh, I, I need to get around to more of his work, because I know he's done a couple more films as well, aside from uh, Roma, so I'll definitely get around to them. Because um, I, I, I'm just finding out that I just really, really like him as a director. I think he's fantastic. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it again. Yeah, I, uh, I also enjoy how we saw the woman in the film go through kind of like all the stages of grief mm-hmm. with her husband cheating on her. Because at first, you know, she hangs up the phone, she's crying. She keeps calling right. him all the time, every single night. And she goes from just like hating him to at one then, and she calls him and she's like, you know, I, I didn't take much money. I left like this. And remember, like you have this food in the fridge your mom gave you. So she's a lot more like accepting and nice. And then later when they're at the, the bar drinking, she's like, oh, I've known he's been cheating on me all along. Like it's like, nothing like it new to me it's just like hearing it firsthand so it's kind of like i don't know i just feel like that the dance we didn't mention the dance sequence is cool the like little bar sequence stuff like that mm, i really really yeah. enjoy that sequence the really diving awesome. board sequence is nuts literally <laughs> d- yeah literally <laughs> well just to point out some context i think it was like tyler the point in our group chat what did he say like what was it he said i, I said <laughs> i want to one of the real talk boys all going to recreate the diving board scene <laughs> and then i was like oh right okay and then i watched it and i was like yeah was, <laughs> that's cool but we won't delete that. again. Spoiler. Let's not say what that bit is. You can just watch it and find out for yourself. And see yeah, that scene. Kind yeah, cool. and I won't spoil it because it is a scene that everyone should see. But it's like the fact that he did a camera shot under the water too was so gnarly. yeah, just an extra bit that's yeah. gnarly. I was like, man, no need for that. <laughs> that <laughs> just was like going off at that point. Yeah, right? that was just <laughs> gnarly. But yeah, you you see, like, and I don't want to like make a broad generalization of like Mexican cinema in general, but I feel like they have a lot of nudity compared to most other cultures of movies. I feel like the few I've seen of both TV shows and movies, they are very open and wild with their, their bodies. I feel like. I think it's uh, a lot of, I don't think it's just uh, Spanish or Mexican cinema or whatever. I think it's a, it's a culture that's, that's especially in, in, in like European countries as well. Like uh, in French cinema, you get it a lot. True, yeah. Um, you get it a lot in French cinema. I think it's just a, a case of just a, a cultural difference and something that the Western society isn't as used to, I guess. Um, but yeah, especially like um, French cinema. So you've got like uh, uh, Gaspar Noé, for example. Gaspar Noé, Gaspar Noé, and it's like Argentinian French and stuff like that. And it does happen a lot. I think it's just a cultural difference. Um, I, th- I think I was going to like George. I was expecting this to be, uh, like okay. Gaspar Noé did a film called Love, which is genuinely a porn film. It's it's uh the the, the sex sequences are, are completely real. Really weird film. I didn't like it at all. And I thought it'd be like that, and it really really isn't. I think if you're going into it like that, you're going to be completely surprised because it's it's a very tasteful brilliant experience that isn't just overloaded with sex scene, sex scene, sex scene. They're there for a meaning, they're there for put in for the right purposes and it's not. I think it, it also comes down to maturity, let's be honest, of kind of what to expect from it. And if you're like thinking this is like porn, then right. I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of weird. It's not, it's really not that bad at all, let's be honest. Yeah. Well, I think we can wrap it up there. So shout out Callum Singh. Um, just a note for all the patrons, I, I not saying this will always happen, but I picked this one because I saw this guy literally recommending it every week for the past like three months. So I just always every yeah, week saw so Itumama yeah. Tambien, Itumama Tambien, Itumama Tambien. So I was like, you know what? He's consistent with this one. He really wants us to watch it. So Callum, we finally watched it. We reviewed it and we all enjoyed it. Uh, Cam did not watch it. We don't know what his thoughts would be on it, but I think he liked coming. I feel like Cam would come on and be like, <laughs> that, say something about the, the diving board scene. Like, this, was, this was stupid. Yeah. Like, something like that. Just yeah. Like, just egregious. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so uh, we'll end it off there. That was a real quick episode 63, our patron review of Itu Mama Tommy N. Let us know what you thought of the movie down below in the uh, in the comments section. And then make sure you follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you're listening to it. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're trying to climb our way to 4K subscribers. Uh, check out the links down below for Patreon and merch. And we will see you on Monday with the next episode of Real Talk.